Welcome to the Delmarva Almanac. Each week we connect you to the best of Delmarva. Like other almanacs, our aim is to tell you a little bit about our past, our present, and events in the near future. I'm your host, Dana Kester McCabe. Well, Happy New Year, everyone, and welcome to our first show for 2016. You'd think that things would be pretty quiet here after the holidays, but that's not necessarily true. There really is much to see and do for the next few months. To help you plan, we will give you the highlights, beginning with the visual arts. This month at the Kent County Public Library in Chestertown, see a nature and wildlife photography exhibit by Jim O'Leary, the senior scientist at the Maryland Science Center. Mr. O'Leary will be on hand for an opening reception this Tuesday, January 5th, from 3 to 6 p.m. During January at the Ocean City Center for the Arts, see a juried member's choice show, along with painter Crystal Collins, photographer Charlie Ewers, and jewelers Susan Keller and Ed Stow. They'll also have their annual shared vision show. In its third year, this pairs local visual artists with writers from the Ocean City Writers Group to create a visual or literary masterpiece. At the Biggs Museum in Dover, see Cecil County, Maryland painter Michael Robert's surreal interpretation of regional landscapes and people. The Biggs will also be collaborating with their Hope at the Art League on the Reflect exhibit at the Art League's Satellite Gallery in Lewis. This is a showcase of 12 international art jewelers responding to selected female portraits. Both shows run through January 10th. Also at the RAL this month, at their Dodd Lane location, will be realist painter Bill Snow. At the Academy Art Museum in Easton, see the work of late abstract artist Robert Rauschenberg. Rokey works from the National Gallery of Art. Rauschenberg personally funded this project in the 1980s, which involved making and presenting work while traveling with a team of assistants through 11 communist countries, including China, Tibet, the former USSR, and East Germany, as a way to foster cross-cultural dialogue. Also at the Academy is an exhibit by sculptor John Rupert. His work includes elegant shapes formed from chain-link fabric and cast metals. All this month at the Main Street Gallery in Cambridge will be a themed exhibit called Shedding Light, with artists showing works that shed light on unpopular or dark subjects. Beginning January 15th at the Foundry in Denton is the Downton Abbey Mystery Quilts exhibit. Just in time for the show's new season, a group of local quilters met this summer and completed their own quilts inspired by the PBS series. Beginning January 19th, check out the Miss Pillion Art League's members show, Winter's Tale, at their gallery in Milford. February 2nd, at the Art Institute and Gallery in Salisbury, is the opening of the Miniature Postcard Salon exhibition. Artists create 4x6 postcards in any media, along with other miniature art. Beginning February 10th at the Old College Gallery in Newark, Delaware, see Artist and Friends, gifts by generous donors from 1917 onward. This exhibit includes artists active in and around northern Delaware, such as Howard Pyle and Frank E. Schoonover. And around the corner at the Mechanical Hall Gallery is Blue and Black, African Rainbow. Selected from the University of Delaware's African American Art Collection, this is a consideration of globalized black experiences with works by Amos Ashanti Johnson, Hermes Tremegistus, and African Rainbow. Also in February, at the Mosley Gallery on the campus of the University of Maryland Eastern Shore in Princess Anne, see History Continues. Six young emerging artists display works that contain connections between African American history and current events and culture. Participating artists are Maya Freelon Asante, Michael Booker, Shante Gates, Jeffrey Kent, and Jamea Richmond Edwards. February 5th is the opening of the annual Winter Abstracts exhibit at Bishop Stock Gallery in Snow Hill. If you love abstract art, this is the place to be in February. And March 8th is the opening of the Poetry Without Words exhibit at the Miss Pillion Art League in Milford. Many towns' art strolls continue throughout the winter. And, oh, by the way, if you'd like to learn how to paint or make pottery or many other creative pursuits, just about every arts organization has classes going on right now. They are an inexpensive way to expand your horizons this winter. 
If you're a budding writer, January 9th at the Cambridge branch of Chesapeake College, the Eastern Shore Writers Association will host author Roger Burt and publisher Ron Souder speaking about the ins and outs of e-book publishing. Their Bay to Ocean Writers Conference will be held March 12th at Chesapeake College in Y Mills. This is a one-day conference organized just to help writers. Registration's been open for a while, so seating may be limited. If you've just joined us, this is the Winter Arts Preview on the Delmarva Almanac. I'm Dana Kester-McCabe. If you're simply looking for a musical night out of the house, Delaware Friends of Folk is featuring Delmarva's own Gonzo Bluegrass Band, Chapel Street Junction, at the Old State House in Dover next Friday, January 8th. Also on the 8th at the Avalon Theater in Easton, you can see Eastern Shore native and acclaimed honky-tonk singer-songwriter Artie Hill. On the 14th, they'll host Salisbury singer-songwriter Sarah Bernstein. She's known for her strong vocals and sharp guitar-playing talent. On January 16th, Denise King and Dwayne Eubanks will do a tribute to the great lady legends of jazz at the Schwartz Center in Dover. That day, the Rehoboth Beach Film Society and the Cape Henlopen Educational Foundation will present the Metropolitan Opera's live broadcast of Bizet's The Pearl at Cape Henlopen High School Theater. Also that afternoon is when Coastal Concerts will present the classical Vita Guitar Quartet at Bethel United Methodist Church in Lewis. At the end of January on the 31st, the mainstay in Rock Hall will host Wharton singer-songwriter Barbara Parker, who will be joined by Joe Holt, Press Harding, and Ray Anthony for an eclectic mix of original music and time-honored jazz standards. If you're looking for musical dinner theater, check out The British Invasion January 9th at the Wicomico Civic Center in Salisbury, which pays tribute to the Beatles, the Dave Clark Five, the Hollies, the Yardbirds, the Kinks, the Rolling Stones, and the Who. Looking for family fare? There are a number of children's theater offerings this season. The weekend of January 15th at the Ocean City Performing Arts Center, the Ocean Pines Youth Theater presents Disney's Beauty and the Beast Jr., and the weekend of January 23rd, take your kids to see the Snow Queen, presented by the Children's Theater at the Schwartz Center in Dover. If you're looking for a more mature theater experience, the last weekend of January and in early February, you'll have your choice between Steel Magnolias, the trials and triumphs of six Southern women presented by the Community Players of Salisbury at Guerrero Hall in Warwick Community College in Salisbury. Or go see Death Trap the classic psychological thriller about the battle of wits between a playwright and his student, produced by Clear Space Theatre Company in Rehoboth Beach. But why choose when you'll have time to see both? On February 12th, the Garfield Center for the Arts at the Prince Theatre in Chestertown will present Voices of Freedom, a historical theatre piece based on the lives of former slaves interviewed during the 1930s as part of the Federal Writers Project. Expect to be transported in time through first-hand accounts, music, and song. And on February 16, come back to the Wicomico Civic Center in Salisbury for another touring Broadway show. This time it will be Tim Rice and Andrew Lloyd Webber's irresistible family musical, Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat. As you can see, if you thought Delmarva was devoid of culture and things to do during the winter, you were mistaken. Visit our website for links and details to these and many, many others. That's delmarvaalmanac.com slash events. Well, that's all for this edition of the Delmarva Almanac. We'd like to thank our community partners, the Friends of Delmarva Public Radio, the Community Foundation of the Eastern Shore, and underwriters, eatdrinkbyart.com, for their help in bringing this program to you, our audience. Our theme music was provided by Brightside Studio. This show has been a Moonshell production. Thanks for listening. Until we meet again, may the rhythms and tides of Delmarva bring you good fortune.